program, and then it was adapted for the shuttle. Now, if I can only take you inside there, you'd see an immense open space running through the center of the building. That's the transfer aisle, where we stage parts of the shuttle for assembly. Assembly takes place in one of four enormous high bays. On the side of the transfer aisle and the high bays are work platforms. They're raised from the floor all the way to the ceiling. Seventy different sizes and shapes of yellow lifting devices that we call ground support equipment are used. There are also the Discovery Orbiter is up orbiting the Earth right now. That's the Discovery. The Endeavor Orbiter was taken out to California about three months ago. It's going to be out there five or six months. See the little alligator by the culvert right here on the right? They're remodeling the Endeavor. Then they'll bring it back here to the Kennedy Space Center to resume its mission. That's the Endeavor. Now I'm going to let the team tell you a lot more about what they do in the Green North Building right in front of us. We're coming up on the orbiter processing facility. That's where I spend most of my time, working with about 250 other people, preparing orbiters for their next mission. We have four orbiters that we launch here at Kennedy Space Center, Columbia, Discovery, Atlantis, and Endeavour. The orbiter processing facility was built specifically for the space shuttle program. There are three identical high bays. Each bay can handle one orbiter. Now if we could just roll up the side of that building, you'd see a honeycomb of work platforms stacked five stories high. You wouldn't see a whole lot of the orbiter though, because it's surrounded by all those platforms. Al, it always impresses me how much work it takes to get an orbiter ready for a launch. How do you organize so many tasks? The whole process is tightly organized into a flow. When an orbiter lands, it gets towed in by a tractor straight from the landing strip. We jack it up and drain its toxic fuels. Then we start inspecting it, servicing, testing, and repairing it. We have to do everything, from change its tires to test everything you see a crawler transporter. Now, this is the vehicle that picks the platform up with the space shuttle on top of it and takes it from the big building out to the launch pad. I don't know if anybody on the bus is from Ohio, but these crawler transporters were manufactured in Marion, Ohio. Now, I'm not allowed to stop here, but I'll go very slow. You can take any photographs, pictures you want to of the transporter. As you look over it, the transporter. Each one weighs about 6.3 million pounds. It's about half the size of an American football field. You see the links on the tracks? Each link weighs one ton, and there are 57 links in each of those eight tracks. Everything around here is kind of Now, if you remember, a while back, Al asked a question. How do you move 12 million pounds of shuttle and platform to the launch pad? If you look over to your right, you'll see the answer. The crawler transporter is the biggest tracked vehicle in the world. The crawler weighs about 6 million pounds, unloaded, and has a surface area about the size of a baseball diamond. Two large diesel engines, which power electrical motors, turn its treads. Operating a vehicle of that size takes a highly trained crew of about 20 engineers and technicians. We know. Oh, we look up in front of the bus. You see six posts just like these, only there's a large platform on top. That's a mobile launch platform, a mobile launcher. Now, to get ready for a launch of the space shuttle, first thing we do is get one of the crawler transporters and drive it right up here and right under the platform. Then the transporter will pick that platform up off the top of the post and take it inside the big building. After they get the transport, the mobile launch platform inside the vehicle assembly building, they assemble the whole shuttle configuration, all four parts of the shuttle, vertically straight up and down on top of the platform inside the building. Now we're all ready to go. So you remember where we are in the story. I'll pick it up a little bit later. Finishing at A. Notice the yellow cylindrical railroad car on our left. That's how we get the solid state fuel here from the state of Utah by rail in those yellow railroad cars. Up in front of the bus on the right, you see the two gravel paths 
Well, you've seen the transporter, so you know that's not two different roads. That's only one road. It's called the Crawler Way or the Crawler Road. We know we just can't drive 18 million pounds down the street or over the sand. It would sink down out of sight. So our engineers designed a very special roadway. The stone road that the crawler transporter travels on is called the crawler way. It's 130 feet wide, about as broad as an eight-lane highway. To support the crawler's tremendous weight, the crawler way has four layers of river rock, crushed stone, and compact fill, going down more than seven feet deep. It really is quite a remarkable sight to see a crawler making its way down the crawlway at the stately pace of one mile an hour with a fully assembled shuttle sitting on top. Adjacent to the vehicle assembly building is the launch control center. The launch control center is the electronic brain of Launch Complex 39. It's the home base of a complicated computer system that oversees the entire checkout and launch process of the space shuttle. This launch processing system... Blue gray box is the countdown clock that you watch on TV at the time of launch of the space shuttle. Those are the press facilities over your right shoulder. We are three and a half miles from the launch site, and this is the closest that anyone is at the time of launch of the space shuttle. As we said before, the reason we launch shuttles is to get the... Pad B in this complex is up to our left, about a mile and a half up the coast from Pad A. Left to go up by Pad B, halfway back to Pad A, where we'll stop. You'll be able to go up on a mound, take any photographs, pictures you want. Don't forget, you can take pictures anytime along the way. Out in front of the bus, a little to the right, you see the gray structure, that's Complex 41. Then down to the right, two or three miles down the coast, that far right through the clearing is complex 41. I'll let the tape tell you a little bit about it. That tall tower you see in the distant right is part of Launch Complex 41, where we launch unmanned exploratory spacecraft. It is currently operated by the United States Air Force and supports all versions of the Titan rocket. Now I bet most of you have seen those amazing close-up pictures of Mars. Including Apollo 11, the first human landing on the moon. Pad B was the launch site in 1975 for the first U.S.-Soviet joint mission, Apollo-Soyuz. Pad B was also the site of one of our greatest tragedies. On January 28, 1986, the shuttle Challenger exploded 73 seconds after liftoff. The entire crew of seven was lost. For almost three years, no shuttles were launched, and the space program underwent a painstaking re-examination. Finally, on September 29, 1988, the shuttle Discovery lifted off from the same launch pad. Almost 400 modifications had been made to the shuttle, and more than 100... The orbiter was launched from 11 years ago last month, January 28, 1986. And that flight 51L, the one that had the terrible accident. Up in front of the bus, Pad B. This is where the Atlantis Orbiter was launched from uh, seven weeks ago on a Sunday morning. The last launch from up here at Pad B, seven weeks ago, the Atlantis Orbiter. to the shuttle. Connected to the fixed service structure is a rotating service structure. We put payloads for the shuttle inside it and then rotate it 120 degrees so the payload can be installed inside the shuttle's cargo bay. Do you see the tall white fiberglass mask rising from the fixed service structure? That's an 80-foot lightning rod that provides a cone of protection for the pad and the shuttle during the frequent lightning storms we get here in Florida. Another interesting feature is the 290-foot high water storage tank next to the pad. Just before the shuttle engines ignite, the tank releases 300,000 gallons of water in 20 seconds. This 
torrent of water protects the shuttle from the shock of sound waves during launch, which can damage critical components. Underneath the pad, there's a flame trench going down more than 40 feet. It's lined with bricks that can withstand temperatures 3,000 degrees and helps direct the fire and the heat of launch away from the pad. The space shuttle usually spends several weeks on the pad before a launch, undergoing extensive checkouts. inside the shuttle during launch. I'll never forget it. The beginning of the ride was very rough and loud. The rockets and the engines were thundering, and my head was... You see that big black tunnel coming right out of the pad right towards us? That's the flame trench. Now, at the time of launch of the space shuttle, the flames from the two white booster rockets and the three engines of the orbiter all go right down into the flame trench. At the very That's the one that they took off for from the moon. Huh? That's the one that they took off from for the moon. Yeah. The mic. This is the one that the Challenger took off from. And that's the one that the Apollo spaceships took off from like Apollo 11 and Apollo 13. There's the buildings over there. Yeah. yeah.
occupies eight acres of land. Now we're headed towards the Apollo 7, Apollo Saturn 5 Center, but we'll still look for one more big alligator up here. Haven't seen him all day, but he might be out now for the youngsters. And we'll take a look, okay? Most of you probably have heard a little bit about it or read a little bit about the new center. You might not know that we've only been bringing the public out here <coughs> for about eight weeks. So it's a brand new facility. They had the soft opening eight weeks ago, and the ribbon cutting was done by astronaut Eugene Cernan. Gene Cernan was the last man left to walk on the moon. Then they had the grand opening four weeks ago tonight. It was on a Wednesday night, four weeks ago, and there were 11 Apollo astronauts here for the grand opening. And a lot of other dignitaries, of course. Now, when I left, leave you out for the building, we're going to go through the building, start through the double.